Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have a very special video for you guys. I put a poll in the free group that I run where I give weekly trading ideas. If you'd like to join the group, it's totally free. The link will be in the description down below. But I asked you guys what you wanted to see and this is what you wanted to see. Top tips I have for Forex beginners. So we're gonna stop the chit chat and just get right into it. So tip number one, stop looking for a trade or a move every time you look at the market. There's not always going to be a setup. There's not always gonna be a trade. If you're looking for something that's not there. That's, you're already building a bad relationship with the market. That's like relationships you create with people looking for something that's not there is bound to fail. You have to take your trades based on your strategy, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, whatever you do that refines your strategy. But just randomly taking trades, that's a huge risk and you're bound to lose. Which brings me to my next point, tip number two. Reward risk ratio. For those of you that don't know what that means, that's how much you're going to gain your reward versus how much you're risking when you're taking that trade. So one to three reward risk ratio that's what i try to do that's what i try to do in the signal group that i run um for every 100 dollars that i'm risking for example i want to make sure that my reward reward is going to be 300 dollars when that trade is finished so three times what i'm risking if your reward risk ratio does not make sense meaning like if you're going to take a trade and you're risking $400 on that trade, but your reward's only like $100, $200. Does that even make sense? That's probably a trade you shouldn't be taking. In real life, you're not going to make that gamble. Pretty much if your profit is too little and your risk is too big, either it's a bad trade altogether or your entry point is really, really bad to have such a huge stop loss. Tip number three. So I always say a jack of all trades is the master of none. Take a certain amount of pairs, two, three pairs that you have studied, that you mastered, you've been back testing, and you pretty much know how that pair moves and rock with those pairs. You don't have to look at every single pair in the market. Not, not only is that going to overwhelm you, but you don't know how every pair moves. Every single pair doesn't move the same. There are way too many pairs in the market that are so volatile that you can't just go and trade anything anytime you want just by looking at it. GBP AUD, hello. US 30, hello. Nods, gold. There's a whole bunch of metals, forex majors, all these pairs that you can't just look at and be like, yeah, I'm going to trade it. So looking at a pair and being good at it means nothing unless you could be great at it. We don't want to be good here. We want to be great because we're trying to make profit. So take two or three pairs. Once you master those two or three pairs, you could stick with them and make profit forever. If you can master those pairs, then you know that your risk is going to shrink. Tip number four, if you have not accepted your risk, your lot size is too big. You're over leveraging. You're risking too much for your account. If you have a $100 account, which you can do when you're trading, you're not going to put a 0.50 for your lot size, a 0.20. You probably can't even open the trade just because your lot size is too big. If you calculate how much you're risking and you have a $100 account and you're like, when if this hits my stop loss, I'm going to lose $30. You're, risk, you're risking 30% of your account for that one trade. Your lot size is way too big and it's going to make you uncomfortable. You're going to get in your head. You're going to constantly check your trade. You're like, is it going my way? Is it going my way? You can't do that. If you're too scared to see red, you're never going to see blue. And you constantly checking your trade means your lot size is too big and you made a mistake. If you're if you're that much in your head that you're constantly having to look at your phone and you're constantly having to look at your computer and you're like, listen, I have to watch this because if this goes bad, my account's going to blow. That means you're doing something wrong. You have to take a couple steps back and you got to reevaluate your reward risk ratio. So these go hand in hand. Tip number five, stop guessing the market and react to it. So if you look at a pair and you're like, I think this is going to go for a buy. So I'm going to go for a buy. You already messed up. You saying, I think it's going to go for a buy instead of my analysis, my strategy says, that this is going to go for a buy. That means you can confidently take this trade 
saying I did what I was supposed to do, I got my confirmations, and I took this trade versus I'm gonna guess and hope that this goes in my favor. You're bound to lose. You're going to lose money like that. So stop taking trades based off of I think and take trades based off of this is what the market is telling me. Tip number six, focus on the psychological aspect of trading. Trading is literally 80% psychology and 20% trading. Once you get it down, once you learn the market, once you learn naked chart tradings, um, once you learn patterns, you refine your strategy, all the rest is literally psychological. You can have the best strategy in the world that works for you, which has a huge percentage win rate. If you're not right in your mind, you're gonna psych yourself out no matter what you say you will miss out on trades because you're second guessing yourself and then you're beating yourself up because the trade went your way and you're like, I knew that this was gonna happen. It's all psychological. Or you're wanting to take a trade and you're gonna second guess yourself and once you see it go red a little bit, knowing that you did your analysis, even though it went negative a little bit and it's going to turn around and go your way because of your analysis, you're gonna hop out and either take a loss or you're gonna get scared and take less than what you could have had. So trading is literally a majority psychological. It's all mental, it's all a mental game. I have a couple of trading books as well that I have looked at. I'm also going to do another video on getting past the psychological aspect of trading to help you build and be able to gain more profit. So stick around and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss this whole series that I'm trying to put together for you guys. Tip number seven, stop comparing your journey and your level to someone else's level. So if you're going through one through 10 and you wanna be at 10 already and you're only at four, it's okay that you're at four because there's someone else that's still at level one that wishes that they were where you're at. You have to find the beauty in your journey and where you're at at that specific time and stop looking at people that are already succeeding. And to tell you the truth, spoiler alert, half of them are lying. Half of them don't know what they're doing. Half of them don't, aren't trading and their money isn't coming from trading. So if someone can't show you that they can take trades, that their students are successful, that they have payouts, then more than likely they, they're bluffing. I know from experience that a lot of these people that show that life on Instagram and stuff that's not their real life okay I don't mean to throw people out there I'm not gonna say names but there are people that actually just rent cars and rent houses to take pictures with them and it's not theirs to put it online just so you could buy into their story and buy into whatever the heck they're trying to sell that's why I say like posting stuff don't go for that seeing someone's life don't go for that. A majority of the time they're lying. <laughs> so stop comparing where you're at to where someone else is at. They got there when they have been trading and they have success, they got there from putting in 110%. If you're only at 60%, you can't expect the same results as someone that's at 110%. So find beauty in what you're doing and stop beating yourself up. Any profit is good profit and any success, any like movement, it's good. Tip number eight, back testing. Back testing refines your strategy. You can go on trading view, it's free, and go like do it on the weekend. I usually back test on the weekend and um, go back a couple of days, go back from the week, go back from the month, and look at the market, see how it moves, go with your strategy, and react to it say this is what happened this is what i see and this is what i think is going to happen going on so if you see for example a double bottom you're like i think that this is going to go for a buy then see if the market goes for a buy you have to back test your strategy you have to back test your knowledge to see and refine everything that you're doing and that will build up your confidence the more you see that you're right, the more you see that you're understanding what's going on, it will help you psychologically and it'll help your confidence in the market and it's bound to increase your profit. This one, tip number nine, don't trade emotionally. 
something that I'm still struggling with and I've always struggled with, even now to this day. Don't trade emotionally. When emotions are mixed up, it messes up the mental. We know that mental is 80% of trading. When you have other factors that are clogging your mind from thinking, you're not going to make good decisions. You'll make impulsive decisions. You'll make decisions that you know that you would have never made with a clear head. You can't trade emotionally. You have 10 other things going on. Find a way. Bring yourself down to earth. Look at these charts and make clear decisions. It's not going to work. Trust me. I've lost money countless times. And I get upset with myself because I look at these trades and I'm like, but I knew this. I knew this wasn't going to go in my favor, but I did it anyway. Not from not understanding the market, not from me not being knowledgeable. It's all emotion. Don't trade emotionally. Put your phone away. Put the charts away. You know, you have kids. I have kids. I get upset. I start looking at the charts while I'm upset and I start making foolish decisions and I start losing. Stop trading emotionally. Tip number 10. Don't get greedy. Okay? This is something I've always struggled with. I see that I made so much profit and I'm like, yeah, I'm having a good day. I'm about to keep making this profit. It's not enough that I made $3,000 for the day because I want five. I want seven. It's not enough that some people make $50. They're like, I want $100. I want two, three, four hundred. I want to make what these big traders are making that have been trading for years. Stop getting greedy. Take your profit. Be happy with the profit you made. Some profit is better than no profit. When you're starting to get greedy, then you'll keep trading. Keep trading means you're over trading. Over trading, not only can you lose your profit, but you could lose your account because you're going to lose what you just made and then you'll be upset and then you'll go and continue to trade because you're like I want my profit back and then you're going to lose more. It's just a never ending cycle. So my best tip for that is to focus when you're trading focus on percentage and not focus on the dollar sign. I found that this does really really help if you have a hundred dollar account and you only made five dollars only made five dollars. You're going to be like, what's $5? $5 is nothing. $5 is 5% of your account. You just grew your account by 5%. Now think of bigger accounts. A $100,000 account. Let's say you have a funded $100,000 account and you made 5%. You just made $5,000 for that day. 5% is a lot for a day's work. It's a lot of profit. So don't get upset about that $5 just because all you can see is the dollar sign. You have to see the percentage of what you're making. I also, when I trade, one thing I do is at the end of the day, I move my profit and I start with the same amount the next day. That's what I did when I was starting trading, like when I was a beginner trader and I was trading, I'll start off with $100, I'll make $15, let's say. At the end of the day, I move that $15 to my landing account and I'm starting with $100 the next day because I want to build up what I have and I want to learn how to increase my $100 account. If you can constantly make $10 on a $100 account, why can't you do it on a bigger account and multiply what you're making? Multiply the percentage. If I'm making 10% on a $100 account five days in a row, I can make 10% on a $1,000 account five days in a row. And that adds up over time. But I never trade and I never risk my profit. I'm not going to gamble my profit. You go to the casino, you make profit. They want you to play with that profit and you're going to lose it. No, I'm trying to go home with my money. So don't get greedy. You can trade the way you want. But I would say start with the same amount every day and learn how to build it up. If you could make 10 pips a day, it doesn't matter what your loss size is later on down the road. You made those 10 pips, you increased your loss size and you're you're getting profit so those are my 10 tips that i have for forex beginners when you're just trading if you want to see anything else comment down below also don't forget to join my free group where i give free trading ideas weekly like i said the link is down below in the description like this video if you found that these are tips that will be helpful to you or if these are things that you struggle with share it with someone else they probably are struggling with it too thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video